Jim Ratashev, how are you all? Um, welcome to the spring session series of workshops. Uh, my name is Siobhan and I am going to be doing a wee workshop today uh, introducing you to slow airs. So, some of you might have an idea about uh, what a slow air is. Some of you might be totally new to it. Uh, some of you might already have a couple of slow airs. So basically in this session, what we're going to do is we are going to talk about what a slow air is, why it's different to a dance tune, um, why it's so special, I suppose, as part of our Irish culture. It's an art form in itself. It's a very old art form. Uh, we are going to learn one of the most basic slow airs. So this will be suitable for anyone who's never done a slow air before. Um, and then we're going to learn like, you know, a nice kind of example of a slow air where you would be able to play it yourself alone, either as a performance piece, you'd be able to play it in a competition. Um, but I chose it because I absolutely love the song that it's based on. Um, and also, I, I don't think once you kind of know the melody, it's not actually one of the most difficult slow airs to do. So hopefully we'll get all that covered. So yeah, a slow air then. Well, the clue's in the name, slow. It's a slow tune. Now, do you know the difference between an air and a slow air? It's really simple, okay? Airs have a beat and slow airs do not have a beat. So what I mean by that is if I played you an air, you could keep the rhythm, you could tap your foot to it. So the south wind. Hopefully you could all hear that rhythm. I was tapping on the chair there, but hopefully you were able to keep that rhythm yourself. So I am sure many of you joining in today, like you already know airs, like the South Wind, uh, In A Sheer, or the O'Carolan tunes tend to be airs like She Big She More, or uh, uh, She Big She More, or my mind's gone like, oh yeah, the Tour Du Dola, which is not O'Carolan, that's uh, different but that's an air, okay? Um, they have a beat. They are slow, but you can still keep the rhythm. So a slow air has no beat. So how, you're probably thinking like, how is it a piece of music then if it doesn't have a beat? Well, basically slow airs in traditional Irish music and the genre we're doing, uh, slow airs are the direct musical translation of Shano's songs, okay? So they come from songs. Now, that is probably the most important key piece of information you will need to remember when you are learning about and mastering slow airs. They are based on songs. Therefore, when you're learning a slow air, the best way to do it is to listen to the song first. Listen to the singer singing the song because your phrasing, the length of the notes you're holding, your ornamentation, everything should mimic the vocals of the singer, okay? And you won't go far wrong there. They'll say this even at competition level, even at like all Ireland level, they will say, did you listen to the singer? Did you listen to the song, okay? Um, I personally find it really, like I love slow airs, you either love them or hate them. Um, some people find them a bit boring, like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep. Um, I think they're beautiful. Uh, as I say, they are an old art form. They have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, but the popularity is kind of decreasing. Um, just obviously because people like the lively, upbeat dance music. But if you get into the slow airs and you start learning all the different songs with their own themes, you know, of love and loss and... Uh, if you listen to the different singers and then you learn how to interpret that musically, that is a skill and it's really, really a special skill to have. So if you can listen to the song, that's my biggest, biggest thing to take away from today. Listen to the song um, because if you're able to sing the lyrics in your head while you're playing, then you know for a fact you're phrasing 
your timing will be correct because you're singing it in your mind. Uh, that's why I chose the slow air I chose for later on in this session because um, it was one I used to sing myself. Now, we'll start off then nice and simple. Let's just try and play a slow air because it's kind of strange if you've not done it before. It's strange not tapping your foot. It's strange trying to, you know, you're trying to find a rhythm and it's not there. Um, but also, there are wee tips, you know, to help you along the way, as well as, you know, just listening to the singer in your head and stuff like that. And also, I want to cover some very basic ornamentation. So we're going to cover a really basic slow air, get you used to playing it, and do a bit of basic ornamentation, okay? So... First slow air is now Tobrón Orm, Tobrón Orm, Neil Melifa. I am not fluent in Irish, so I'm not even going to give you the Irish title, but you'll all know it. It's for Ireland. I won't tell her name. Okay. Uh, for Ireland. Some people call it. I'll play it for you first, right? Okay, that was it played once. Uh, one thing that is similar to the dance tunes, uh, you play a slow air twice. You play it twice round, okay? Whether you're doing it competitively or for a performance piece or whatever, you always play it twice. Okay, now that's a nice, easy, slow air to begin with. Um, arguably, depending on how you play that, you can find a beat in it. But realistically, you should be playing it so slow enough that it's sort of difficult for anyone to be tapping along with, all right? Another major uh, element of slow air playing, as well as trying to play it like the song, um, is control of your instrument. So obviously I'm on a wind, in wind instrument to whistle or flute. That is a massive part of the slow air playing. It's the breath control. You don't want to be taking wee breaths in the middle of phrases because a singer wouldn't take a breath in the middle of a word or a sentence, realistically. They they would get the sentence over, then take their breath. So the phrasing is important for the breath control of the wind instruments. But if you're playing a slow air on a fiddle or a harp or something, the phrasing is equally as important. You just don't have to worry about breathing. You just have to worry about your timing of the phrasing, okay? So it's basically the same thing. So what I mean by that is, right, You've got the notes there of For Ireland, right? See, in For Ireland, if you're playing that, you're going G, G, B, D, D, E, G, G, B. That was all one phrase. So one breath for the whistle players. Or do you hear that's fluent? It's fluid. I'm not breaking it up. 
or pausing in the middle of the phrase. Okay, so do you know what? Let's get cracking. We'll try and play it together. And then we'll talk a wee bit about ornamentation as well. So first line sounds like, now listen really carefully to the phrasing. Yeah. G A B D E G A B Let's go. In the A doll. After two. A hand. A doll. Good. Second line. Okay, let's do the second line together. One and Okay, good. Third line. Now, wind instruments especially, this is a C natural. You know at this stage, hopefully, that you have to blow gently for C natural, okay? Otherwise the tuning's gonna be really off in the middle of the tune, in the middle of the slow air, all right? It needs to be nice and gentle, okay? And I suppose that's the vibe or the feeling you're going for. Gomeleskil in all slow airs. It's gentle, it's melodic, it's hypnotic, it's soft. Now, when we move on to the next level of slow airs, I will talk to you about intonation, which means you're switching it from soft to strong, you know, low to low to hard. That's a different skill. OK, for the moment, let's keep it nice and soft and sweet. OK, so we're going on to the third line, I think. So third line. No, we did it already with the C note. Let's just do it one more time together. Third line. Okay, fourth line then. Try it together, fourth line, one and Okay, can we just try then the first four lines together to make sure we've got the melody and we've got the feeling of it all right? Now, please don't panic if you're playing along and you're going, I don't know when she's changing the notes. I don't know what the heck's happening here. If you've never played a slow air before, this is going to take some time. You, you don't just start playing them out of nowhere. It takes time. You need to start listening to different recordings of different slow airs. Start with the basics like For Ireland or Roisin Du. And, uh, you know, I can give you 
recommended slow airs depending on your instrument as well do you know if you want to get in touch that way and say look Siobhan I need four slow airs and I want them for the fiddle um and I'm 15 or whatever and I can or you can say look I'm uh, I'm going into senior harp playing and I've never done the, the, whatever it is I can help you do you know direct you but for now we'll just try and do those four lines together so from the top after two one and Okay, folks, fifth line. Now, here's a hint for doing slow air playing, uh, no matter what level you're at, okay? I was talking about being soft and gentle, yeah? And see, when you move into the higher octave, or like, say, the second part, because we don't really put the slow air into first part, second part, like a tune. But when you move into that higher octave, that's when you can, like the wind instruments, you can blow a bit harder then to make it sound more powerful, to give it that drive, to give it the oomph where the person's going, oh, it's like building, right? Um, it's the same really on the fiddle. Intonation means you can play it quiet, then loud, then quiet again, then loud again, right? So if I were doing any intonation in this at all, and this is like an advanced sort of skill, so don't be panicking if you're thinking, no, I just want to learn how to play this. That's fine. But if you are interested in slow airs, you would need to be thinking about the intonation as well. So in For Ireland, the first four lines, I personally would be doing them soft, quiet. Right? And then when you get into the higher octave where you're going, and you can do soft and loud, not only according to the octaves, you can do it within a line. So you can go like B, C, D, B, A, G, B, D, E. Do you hear that? I went loud, soft, loud. Play about with that. So, next line is G, E, D. Okay, so let's try that G, E, D line. One and G, E, D. B A G A B A Good. One more time. Right. That's good. Next line, you'll probably notice a wee pattern now starting to emerge. We've done that line before, okay? Let's do it. And yeah, doll, labor doll, after two, please. And here, a doll.
Okay, good. Last line. Okay, let's try that last line one more time. One and Okay, great. So we're gonna try and play the whole thing together now. All right, just try and if you can, if you don't need the notes, close your eyes, really get the melody into your head. And then I want you to see when you're learning slow airs and you're listening to the singer or you're listening to someone playing the slow air. Uh, a really important element of the slow air playing is the emotion. It's quite an emotive kind of playing. So what I mean by that is like, don't be afraid to close your eyes and really listen to the song. What are they saying? What are they feeling? What are they thinking? You know, don't be afraid to kind of, even if you want to sway and you're really, you know, if you're getting into it, it'll take some time. Do you know, it's very, I mean, it's not dissimilar. It's not dissimilar to like, if you're in a session and they're playing a really class set of tunes and you're going like, no, you're getting really into it. Except this is just the, the lower end, the slower end of the spectrum where you're kind of, no, you're really thinking and contemplating and listening to what the song's about and, uh, you know, are you feeling sad? Are you feeling... Try and tap into the emotion of the slow air every time you're learning one and every time you're going to play it. You can't just sort of play notes off a page. It won't work. It won't translate. Good slow air playing has to be emotional. It has to be meaningful. Uh, and you have to be expressive Okay, so we'll try and play this from the top, all right? In ye doll, lever doll, after two, please. One and.
My Shiv, well done if you were playing away with that. Okay, that was great. Um, now, just a quick uh, bit about ornamentating a slow air. Now, ornamentation is subjective anyway. So no matter what instrument you're playing, no matter what tune you're playing, it's down to your personal preference. It's down to your own style. It's down to what you like, what you don't like, all that. Now, um, I suppose for any instrument doing a slow air, Within reason, you can add in ornamentation. When I say within reason, the melody is the star of the slow air. Like that song that's being sung is the star. If you start over ornamentating and if you start putting in loads of rolls and trills and cuts and taps, you lose the integrity of the melody. You lose the strength of that uh, musicality. So you don't ever want to over ornamentate. You might get away with loads of ornamentation and dance tunes and stuff. You won't get away with it on slow airs because it just dilutes the song down too much. What I would say to you is within reason, you could be doing some cuts or taps, a bit of both. Um, for example, like the first line of For Ireland. I've just cut that G. Cut that G again. Okay, there's an example you can add in cuts. Now, the main ornamentation that you will be doing uh, in your slow airs will be vibrato. So vibrato, the clues in the name, it sounds like vibration or vibrate. That's exactly what it is. Uh, vibrato is a technique used to make a note vibrate so if you imagine a note like a straight line, like the vibrato would be like, nah. do you hear the difference? So I am going to show you how to do ornament or vibrato as a form of ornamentation now. Obviously, I'm teaching on a tin whistle. If you are joining in this workshop and you're playing a fiddle or a button accordion or whatever, you need to go to your teacher and ask them, how am I going to ornamentate this? Okay, well, I put a cut in here or a tap. Can I do vibrato? Like, I know you can on a fiddle and stuff. It's like up here. Um, it's going to be a different technique for a banjo, maybe. Uh, you, you would be plucking more. Uh, and harps and all. Like, you need to ask your teacher. They will know exactly what you need to be doing for your specific instrument. But for today, I'm just going to show you the very basic vibrato, which is G. OK, G is what we would always start on, if, even if I'm teaching you a roll or whatever. Now, vibrato then. Here's a G note just played straight, as I call it. Oh, come on, I hope I don't get the hiccups now. That's the worst thing about a wind instrument. When, you're, when you have the hiccups, you can't play them. Right, vibrato on the G would be. Do you hear the difference? Okay, so on the flute or the whistles uh, and the pipes, guys, what you're doing literally is um, you play the note. So say it's G. Play the note. You skip the hole below. So you're going to skip F for G. And you tap on that hole below it. So if you're playing G, you skip F, tap on E. If you're playing F, skip E, tap on D. If you're playing A, skip G, tap on F. B, skip A, tap on G. Now, there's no hard and fast rules, okay? That's the way I do it. If you can just do G vibrato with me for a second, then it'll give you a chance to see what it feels like. Now, guys, you've got to move the finger up and down quickly, okay? It can't be like... That's not going to do anything. It has to be like, right? And also, um, it's light. It's a light tap. It's not like a tap. Say you're tapping an F and you go, Psh. it's not like that. It's like light, up and down, light, okay? So it's like, if you tap harder, the vibrato becomes stronger. Listen. 
right? You can do a strong vibrato by doubling up the fingers. So instead of one, you do this. We're not even going into that today. That's an advanced technique when you're doing strong vibrato. And if it's not done properly, it doesn't sound great. I just want to make you aware of the fact that you can do like a light vibrato where you skip two holes, your regular vibrato, skipping one hole, and your strong vibrato where you're doubling up. Okay, we are just doing a regular G vibrato. All right, after two, one and perfect. Okay, G vibrato, you use vibrato on long notes because you obviously need the time to do the finger work. You can't do like a G vibrato at the start of For Ireland where you're going, because it would be like, you don't hear it. You would need to do it at the last note where you're going, Another easy but effective form of ornamentation that you can use in slow airs is the slide. So you can go like. You're sliding the finger across. I would do that right before the end note, maybe. That's that's a nice where you do a slide into a vibrato. So that's plenty to think about. If you're happy enough here, you can pause the video, go back over for Ireland, try and put in your cuts, try and put in a slide, play about with the G vibrato, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to move on now and we're going to do an advanced air, an, an advanced sort of slow air. Now, this one, um, I think it's nice because it's a beautiful song, okay? I'll make sure you get the lyrics as well to the song so you can listen to um, different recordings of it. Make sure you listen to singers singing that, okay? Um, it's called Edward Onlock Ern's Shore. Ern being in Fermanagh, okay? Lock Ern. And it's a love song, um, but it's also quite sad. So I won't give away any more than that. It's a lovely melody. I really, really like it. Um, and I think it's not too difficult on the level of difficulties for an air, but it's still up there where you could play it no problem in competition and stuff, and it would be considered to be advanced enough. Um, it's just about, how, again, how you ornament it, how you express it, how you do your intonation, soft, loud, and all that. Uh, I'll play it for you here now. And if you want to, you can close your eyes and try and really feel the music, okay? There we go. <clears throat>
Right. So that was Edward Onlock Earnshore. So I'm going to teach it to you a line at a time, just as if we're learning the song. Okay. And then I will leave it up to you guys to start putting your own ornamentation in, uh, to start using your own intonation. So if you're, you know, a flute player and you've never done a uh, slow air on your flute, you need to start playing around with blowing in gently and then blowing in hard without losing the tuning, you know, all that sort of thing. There's a lot of technique involved and it's going to take more than a few weeks or a few months to get that technique right. But at least you're starting now with the basics. And this is a lovely slow air to have in your repertoire. So first line is. Okay, after two, here we go. One and. And remember, pause as you're going along. If you want to do a line three times or five times or whatever, pause and then join back in, okay? Second line. So, Ready to try the second line? Here we go. One and. Good. Third line. It's just the same as the first. Here we go. One and. Galanta, beautiful. Last line now for this wee bit. Wind instruments, please be gentle with the C natural, okay? Otherwise it'll sound really out of tune. One and Let's try that last line again. One and. Okay, let's put those four lines together. That's enough for the minute, all right? From the top, here we go. Edward on Lock Aaron Shore. One and. Okay, there's the first couple of lines. So pause the video here and go back over them now. The glasses have gone wonky again. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, desperate, hi, desperate. Right, um, 
that's the first few lines. Now, here we go with the next part. So when she goes into the bridge, it's... Uh, So control that higher octave, all right? In the do, hen, do. Again, one and. Lovely. Next bit. Ready? One and. Nice. Okay. A repetition from above. One and. One more time. Last line. One more time, last line. One. And sorry, I'm away with the fairies here. One and okay. So, guys, you need to go through this video thoroughly and pause each line so that you get the timing and the rhythm and the not rhythm, the, like if you get the intonation and you get the expression of it okay, um, then you're going to need to go on YouTube and you're going to need to type in Edward Unlock, Aaron Shore. Uh, I know I love Deirdre Scanlon singing it, but you'll hear lots of different versions of it. You know you've got it right if you're playing along with the singer and you're taking breaths where the singer's taking breaths and you're holding the notes as long as the singer's holding the notes, Okay. That is the basic rule of the slow airs, okay? They're musical translations of songs. They have to be expressed with emotion and feeling, but they ha the phrasing has to match the singing. That's the main thing, okay? Can't just hold on a note because you like it, or you can't cut a note short because you need a breath. You have to fit the structure of the song, okay? So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, at least you have a basic slow air now. And uh, I mean, you will hear for Ireland played at sessions and stuff. Um, but it's a beautiful genre of tune. Um, one that I'm, I am passionate about the slow airs. Like I really am. Um, and I think they're forgotten about a lot. I think they're pushed to the side. They're all oh, they're boring. All oh, they're really old fashioned. All oh, whatever. They are gorgeous when they're done right. And. You know, you could just spend hours and hours and hours going through all the different songs and stories and stuff. So hopefully I have ignited a bit of interest and not put you off them for life. Um, but look, keep um, keep following our Facebook page at CC Ballina Gallia. Um, you know, we'll be doing lots of other activities throughout the year. Um, and also there are, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there are loads of other workshops happening as part of this spring series, spring session series. So make sure you get on to your friends, and your family and your cultists, crew and whoever, 
uh, get them to, you know, go on to our YouTube channel and maybe learn a new tune or learn a bit about a new instrument, whatever, you know, keep going. And hopefully we'll be out of this lockdown soon and we'll be able to meet up and have a session and a tune and a dance and a song and all that. So, Gramila Mayaga, thank you very much for joining me. Slan. <laughs>